As we've already mentioned, the match was a landmark in the distinguished career of the inspirational Springbok captain, John Spitt. To celebrate the occasion of his 100th cap, we went to see him, complete with his commemorative shirt at his Durban home, to look back over the highlights of a decade at the very highest level of the game. People hear the cliches a thousand times about you know every single time you get to pull over a green and gold jersey, it's a privilege, and it and it, it, and it is. It's a massive privilege, and it's an honour. You know, I think that the, the best saying or the best way to look at being a Springbok is knowing that it's not your jersey. You've just you've just responsible for it at, at that particular 80 minutes of the Saturday. Smith's first chance to wear that famous green and gold shirt came in 2000 when he came on as a replacement against Canada in East London. That first test, it's like a blur. I remember it uh, as if it was yesterday. And um, you know, look, I think about the people that I ran onto the field with and the legends of the game then. You know, and sometimes I, you know, I have to pinch myself to realise that it's all, all become a reality. By the time of the 2003 Rugby World Cup, Smith had become indispensable to the Springboks. And it was in Australia where he had his first experience of international captaincy, deputising for Cornick Krieger who was rested for the match against Georgia. It's nice to be able to play your first game as captain in a World Cup against uh, probably a, a team like Georgia where you, know, you don't have to worry too much about the results and you can worry more about captain the side. Um, if you'd said to me after that game, you know, you know, how many more games do you think you're captain, you know, I, would have, I would have been skeptical about whether I, it would have been another one because um, you know, of the nature of where I was at the time and, and the nature of where the Springboks were at the time. Smith was appointed full-time captain in 2004 and immediately led the box to the Tri-Nations title. In that campaign and the others that have followed, he's confronted many formidable hookers. But which of them have proved to be the hardest to handle? The four that stand out for me are, are um, you know, Right now, Kevin Mialama, who's always been a competitor, pretty much throughout the same era as I've been. Uh, earlier on, Anton Oliver, um, and then um, Steve Thompson as well. Who's always, you know, he's been a similar type of uh, hooker to, to what I am, a tough competitor in the scrum. You know, a guy that I've always enjoyed playing against and, and has always brought the best out of me. But I think on top of the list has got to be the, the old, the old man with the, 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 you know, with the shiny head, uh, Keith Wood. He was an amazing competitor. His finest hour as Springbok captain came when he led the team to the 2007 Rugby World Cup in France. The team had endured a difficult build-up to the tournament, but the victory over England in the final ensured that Smith experienced something shared by an elite and privileged few. Yeah, I can take everything away from you, but they'll never be able to take away what it felt like to, to hear that final whistle. And, and, and you know, people always say, how does it feel? And uh, I, um, it's hard to explain in words because I don't think that the, the, the dictionary can really show you how to translate what you feel into the English language. But what I can say is that, you know, there's very, very seldom in life do you get an, a feeling of elation, the emotion that, that absolutely, absolutely rushes through your body and fills you up with, 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 with everything, almost like there's no, not enough room to breathe. Ten years previously, Smith had played for Natal against the 1997 British and Irish Lions. He'd been forced to watch his country lose the series to the tourists. But revenge, when it eventually came, was sweet. That was, I think, the carrot that kept us in the race you know, as the guys that had won the 2007 World Cup was knowing that the Lions were coming after, after 12 years, they were going to be back here in 2009, and, and we were absolutely adamant that that was going to be a success for us. And, Making it happen in the fashion that we did in Pretoria was uh, something I'll never forget. As his career draws to an end, there's one particular goal left to achieve, a successful defence of the Webb Ellis Cup. It's only that true belief that we can do it back to back that has, has kept me in the game. And you know, to, The thing is, it's that carried off. It's never been done twice in a row before. And um, that, sadly for all the opposition, is, is what drives this team at the moment because of all of its, its, its experience. Smet will surely know when it's time to call it a day, but in the meantime, he's comfortable in his role. He recognises the uniqueness of his position and the influence he can have on a country still going through some remarkable changes.
The biggest lesson I've learned as captain is is how to de is, is 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 dealing with people, and and, I, and it doesn't matter who they are. You know, people react differently, people are brought up differently, and we're all from different backgrounds in this country. But yet we've got this tolerance for each other, and we are creating this tolerance for each other. And the more this tolerance is created, the faster we escalate as as a great as a great country. And um, you know, I think the Springboks have certainly been a team that has show, showcased that for for the nation.